So now I'd like to uh, welcome our first speaker. This is, this is an amazing group of three speakers, and I, I just, we are just very, so fortunate to have Tony, Helen, and Sandra tonight. My uh, first speaker is Tony Engrafia, the Dwight C. Baum Professor of Engineering at Cornell. Has many years of experience working in the industry, working on projects uh, related to fracturing of, uh, of rock. Um, he's a co-author of two groundbreaking studies on methane emissions from unconventional gas extraction. And those two studies have, um, with uh, Professor How Bob Howarth at Cornell, have, have shaken up the industry. As I said to Tony, just before this, you know you're hitting, hitting them where it matters when uh, to the degree to which they attack you, you know how effective you've been. So by that measure, Tony and Bob have been enormously effective. <laughs> so Tony. Thank you, Martha. Good evening, everybody. Uh, before I get started, happy holidays to everybody and thank you all for coming. And I want to issue a, a special shout out to my good buddy Joe from EID. Thank you, Joe. You're always welcome at our open citizen events. Transparency is very important for all of us. We just expect that EID makes their meetings transparent and open to us also. <laughs> and I want to especially thank you for providing word for word plagiarist material that appeared in Forbes today from your blog site. You'll hear more from that later. So what can I possibly tell this group that you don't already know? Um, I, I can't give you new information. What I'm going to try to do tonight is help you order your thinking, um, give you some protocols that you might consider if you choose to act as an advocate. Tonight we have an advocate. Um, an attorney and an activist, and we all have roles to play. And so if you choose to respond with comments to DEC on the proposed second draft of the regulations as an advocate, then maybe what I have to say tonight will be useful. So we'll start at the beginning. Hopefully you've all seen the website where everything gets started. This is the DEC website. Uh, and if you can click, oh, I have the clicker, right? Um, there's the, the URL for it. Um, at the bottom of that first page, you will see access to downloading all of the proposed second draft of the regulations. Everybody knows that at this point. But I'm afraid that not everybody realizes that that's not the place to start. Uh, the place to start, unfortunately, is here. Uh, as Martha said, this is the second draft of the regulations. Uh, we were all to comment by January 12th of this year uh, on that first draft, and DEC by law was required to read every comment, all 650 of them, coagulate them into a set of themes, and then issue written responses. And so I'm pointing out this, which I think is the starting point, and that's where I started. I can confess to you right now, I have not yet read completely the second draft of the regulations. I've read the first draft, because I wrote comments on it last year. I was one of the, one of the 650. Uh, but prep, preparatory to reading the revisions, I wanted to see how DEC responded to the comments they got the last year. So a rational approach, I'm the engineer, right? And I'm an advocate. The rational approach to the public comments on the proposed new regulations would be this set of steps. Uh, first, you would find a copy of last year's proposed regulations. Hopefully, you all downloaded it back then, but you can certainly find it on the web. And you would reread them if you hadn't read them last year. Then you would do a line-by-line -line comparison between last year's version and this year's version to see what changed. Then you would read the entire assessment of public comment, which is another document available on the website, to see how DEC coalesced, coagulated all 650 comments into about 150, and then how DEC responded to each one. This will give you some notion of what will be done with your words this time. You should, see what you're, you should establish a set of expectations, not too much, not too little. 
you would then be able to determine what the DEC is protecting from change. With all the comments they got last year, what did they decide that they would not change and why? You would also see what they did change from the old version to the new version and why. And remember, the comments they got last year came from people who were all for shale gas development in New York State and people who were against shale gas development. So you'll see how DEC responded to both positive and negative comments. You would then be able to individually or collectively plot a strategy for how you would write this time to say, DEC, we noticed that you didn't change what we wanted you to change last year, but did you consider this? Or we don't accept the rationale you proposed last year because there's new information in the, in the last year. So a rational way of doing it would be that, and then you hope this time that they change the things that weren't changed the last time that you would still like changed this time. Is that confusing? Who has the time to do this? <laughs> I'm still here. <laughs> uh, I have a vague notion, having read the, very thoroughly the ones from last year and just scanning what's going on this year and scanning a lot of the stuff that's coming out on various websites uh, that you'll hear mentioned tonight that are very important that you spend time on. Uh, but I really would advise that you at least spend some hours reading how DEC responded last year. And I'm going to help you do that by giving you some examples. So let me begin with a comment that I sent, because I was very curious about whether DEC was going to explicitly react to a comment that I sent. I sent many comments. Um, here's one I sent. sent. Uh, the... Uh, DSGEIS, and then I quoted the, the new proposed regulation that corresponded to this, does not offer any scientific evidence that an additional intermediate string of casing will decrease the likelihood of migration of hydrocarbons into an underground source of drinking water. And then I appended documents and sketches that show that even with a fourth string of casing or a fifth string of casing or a sixth string of casing, bad things have still happened. I documented them. I actually extracted from the uh, um, DEP, Pennsylvania DEP documents pertaining to the leaking wells in Dimmick, that all the wells that leaked in Dimmick had at least four layers of casing, and they all leaked. And so I made a recommendation. You can read it yourself. I said, well, DEC should do its homework. DEC should figure out, based on the experience in Pennsylvania and other states, uh, whether requiring an extra string of casing would or would not have any effect. So I asked them to do scientific investigation. Got that? All right, so now I'm going to show you the response that DEC wrote. And remember, they had to aggregate into one response answers to comments that, they appear, that they appear to them to be similar. So I was probably not the only person who brought up this issue of the proposed intermediate casing. So here was a comment, which is their way of aggregating. And you'll see the word Dimmick in here. And you'll see that they, in fact, somehow in those words put together what I said with what a bunch of other people said. And then they concluded in their response that since I hadn't provided scientific proof, even though I asked them for scientific proof, they stand by their statement. Let me see. I hope you got that. So I asked the people in charge of writing the rules to show us, the people who could potentially be harmed, the scientific evidence that requiring an extra string of casing would have any effect. And in response, they said, well, you didn't prove that it would. OK. I just want to make sure you understand <laughs> the kind of responses you can get. They also keep using, as you'll notice, they'll keep using the word prevent. Um, engineers don't like to use the word prevent. Prevent is like, a, is like a word like safe. Safe means nothing ever happens. Prevent means nothing ever happens. So you might want to make sure that in the comments that you write, you write them in a way that they understand that all you're asking for is to minimize the probability of something happening, whether it's because of setbacks or casings or use of chemicals. Uh, and point out to them that it's absolutely impossible for any human being to prevent an accident. You can only minimize the probability. Let me show you a couple of other examples so you get a sense of how much effort you should put into writing a comment. 
and then I'll actually outline how I suggest, how I suggest you should do it. Uh, but I'll give you an idea of how they respond. Here, here was a comment that was quite uh, extensive. It, it quoted the environmental conservation law in a couple places. It pointed out um, that wasteful disposal of gas violates New York State environmental conservation law 71-1305 that says it shall be unlawful for any person to waste oil or gas. So why are you, you, why are you allowing flaring and venting? Seems like a reasonable question. Here's their answer. All of it. The department agrees that it is undesirable to allow gas to escape in the air. However, limited venting and flaring of gas produced from a well may be necessary in some circumstances. Not necessarily. And then here's one that's very much related. Again, a, a very similar comment. It's amazing how they aggregated some of the comments and decided to keep others separate. It doesn't seem to be a consistency there, so be aware. Uh, flaring of gas is permitted if no gathering line is in place. Blah, 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 blah. The result is wasted gas. Now they go to great length to explain that flaring of gas produced for a well is necessary in some circumstances without mentioning venting. But if you go back one comment, they do mention that flaring and venting will both be allowed in certain circumstances. And let me move on to the next stage, which is how you might choose to write a comment. And in doing so, I'll try to summarize this issue on flaring and venting. So I'm trying to do two things at one time here. Be patient with me. So we at Physicians, Scientists, and Engineers for Healthy Energy, it's called PSE, Joe, not P-S-E-H-E, -E, um, are in the process of putting together our comments. And we will post them on the PSE website sometime before um, before it becomes useless to do so. And so here's an example. You pick a point in the regulations, in this case, fluid holding pits, reserve pits. And the first thing you do is in bold italics, you tell them what your recommendation is that appears to be contrary that's when, what's in the regulation. Many times last year, people wrote comments and they were very verbose and it was very difficult for even me to figure out what the recommendation was. So make the recommendation very clear. Although the proposed regulations generally require closed loop processing of fluids, there are some exceptions. We recommend that any pits used for anything besides new fresh water be accompanied by a specific monitoring water well or monitoring water wells. There's the specific recommendation. Then you have to give a rationale. You just can't say it. They'll dismiss your comment. You'll see if you read the comments that the EC uh, published just a few weeks ago that in many cases they just would one sentence dismiss the comment as immaterial. So give them a rationale and then cite the literature. It's very difficult for a DEC to dismiss something when someone has done their homework and cited the literature which hopefully they know of or didn't bother citing or you can show them where the literature is. So I would recommend that a format for your comments should you choose to go the advocate way which is an in-depth reading of the regulations pondering what they mean, recommending an alternative if you think one is necessary, uh, writing a very clear rationale for why you think it should be changed, then citing the available literature. Okay. So here's another example, getting back to venting and flaring. Uh, you've heard the phrase green completions, AKA reduced emissions completions, also called RECs. Um, the DEC has decided not to require reduced emission completions in the current version of the regulations, despite the fact that the EPA, in its new air rules published in April of this year, says that by January 1, 2015, all new oil and gas wells drilled in the United States must use reduced emission completions. So why would DEC be leaving a time gap? Why doesn't New York take the lead and say, well, this is going to happen eventually on January 1st, 2015. It's certainly the right thing to do. If we don't do it, we're violating our own ECL 23 don't waste gas law. Um, so the recommendation is RECs be required by regulation on all shale gas wells. Why? Here it is. And to give the example citation, in this case, the EPA new air regulations that go into effect. So it's very difficult for who's ever reading these at DEC to dismiss something like that when there is a spelled out rationale that makes sense and is built on other regu regulations or laws. 
and then you can back it up with appropriate citations. So, um, summarize. You can choose to go one of two ways, you, you, and you're gonna hear later tonight that uh, both quantity and quality of comments are important. Uh, if you choose to go the advocacy route, meaning that you're building your comment on the best available science, you're keeping emotion entirely out of your comment, uh, it's cerebral, as deep as you can get it, then before you do that, tune in to how DEC has responded in the past to various styles of comments. Pick a style that fits best how you want to write, Perhaps use the format that we recommended. Make very clear what your recommendation is that runs counter to the regulation that you're questioning. Uh, make sure that you have a well-reasoned rationale. It doesn't have to be one sentence, two sentences. It can be 20 pages, as long as it's reasoned uh, and not overblown. And then cite the literature. And um, we at PSE have that as our main mission. Uh, to find vetted literature that's relevant to all, not just shale gas development, but all relatively new ways of energy development. So be aware that you will be able to go to the PSE site right now and find a tremendous amount of archival literature, peer-reviewed literature uh, from prestigious journals, from government reports that you can mine uh, for support of your comment. So. Last thing I want to say is there's the website. It's pseHealthyEnergy.org, um, and um, be aware that there's a lot of stuff already there. But we'll be posting a lot more. Stan Scobie, Dr. Stan Scobie, one of our principals, uh, is in the process of putting together a very long and very detailed set of recommendations, which you're perfectly free to read and adapt as you see fit. So thank you very much for your attention. I want you to make sure that you pay attention to the next two speakers because. All three things, all three approaches, all three ways that we're attacking this issue tonight are crucially important. So thank you for your attention. Thank you so, so much, Tony. It, it makes me feel much better to know that you're going through this with that kind of fine tooth comb and we'll do our best to, to add. So thank you so much.